Hi, I'm Laser Dad, Syracuse, New York. I'm going to be documenting my 86 Chrysler Laser. I've been working on it since 2005, and uh, a lot of time and effort into it. It's one of those things that every time I start working on it, I find things I can improve on. So I, this hopefully will be the last time I have to rebuild everything. But I uh, thought I would give you a tour of what it looks like and hopefully where it's going to go. A-frame, it's been powder coated, there's the control arms. One of the things I'm going to do is probably raptor coat this. It's got a few rust spots on it. It's got a few years use on it after it got powder coated. If you look under the car, One of the things we did under the car was removed all the factory undercoating and resprayed it with Raptor 2K hardener bed liner. And this stuff is really strong. Uh, you can't scratch it hardly. So it really cleans up the look on the bottom of the car. And in my mind, it's going to do way more than the rust proofing did. The rust proofing, more or less. Just got on everything. You touched it, and it was all over, and didn't really protect the car that well. Uh, car itself, as I said, is an '86 Laser. Um, I've last couple weeks. We've spent a lot of time cleaning up the engine compartment. One of the things I never liked was between each of the, the frame and the fender, there was a spot welded gap in here that we welded in, smoothed over. So now the entire car, the entire engine compartment looks nice and smooth. Painted it with Viper Blue and has the 2K clear coat hardener on it. It was right here where the transmission mount was. There were deep holes in here that the weld on it was terrible. So to me it looks a lot better now. And it just it doesn't catch your eye when you're looking at the engine compartment. I can't say it's something somebody's going to notice when they're looking at it but it's one of those things that they won't notice how bad it is rear brakes uh, these are the the big brakes the 90s 16 inch and well, for for the 16 inch wheel i think they're 11 inch brakes Brake rotors of the slided type. That's the rear and the fronts. Brake hubs are the stock laser setup. For my Daytona, I've actually gone to the bigger four and a half inch spacing from the caravans. But these are the standards. I'll have to clean those up a little bit. So the wheel well you can see really looks a lot better with the Raptor coating on it. Um, again, really solid. The rear shock has been replaced with a strut from a, this is Megan Racing it came the setup is from a Volkswagen Jetta and uh, I did this over 10 years ago 
I came up with the combination after searching many junkyards and trying different shock setups. So if you notice at the top, instead of going through like the normal laser setup does, this has a, a strut pivot that goes through the top. So we've had to drill a hole between the two bolt holes for the shock. And then that mounts up here. So it's nice and strong. It works well. I've had, like I say, I did this 10 years ago. One of the things I forgot to mention was we rear mounted the battery. So it's now freed up a lot of space from the front. Also has a nice quick disconnect on it. So if you want to theft proof it, it makes it quick. Underneath, um, the rear axle has been powder coated, gas tank, uh, actually is not new, it's a couple years old, but it was clear coated, and you can see the Raptor coating in here, so I, I think it makes a nice combination. Still have to run all my brake lines and my fuel lines up front. Emergency brakes is the stock. Rear disc brakes set up, the slotted brakes. Uh, we'll be replacing the calipers with, I got an identical set that's red. So I'll be putting those on. One thing I do plan to do for suspension to lower the car is to install limit straps. Uh, I had done this on my Daytona. You put them in here and it controls how far down the rear axle will drop. So you don't end up with the spring not being supported at all in here. Also, my jack setup is a quick jack. I used to use the ramps that you drive up on, and then you lift the back of the ramp up. I like those, and but if your car wasn't running, it was a real pain because you had to winch it up. And with the quick jacks. Um, you just connect your hydraulic lines, hit the button, and up they go, and then let them down, and you can disconnect them, put them away, whatever you want to do. So I can highly recommend that if you're looking for an inexpensive jacking system, quick jack's the way to go. Interior of the car, uh, it's kind of a mess. Seats are out of a Toyota Celica. Um, really like them in the fact that they're manual, so they're lighter than electric seats. The other advantage is that they have a height adjuster. So you can adjust these up or down about an inch and a half, two inches. And that works out great for my wife because she's short and I'm tall. So it allows us to both to drive it. Um, floor set up. This is where the brake comes through. I had to adapt the rod for the power brake. I adapted that, and then I also put a clutch switch on, so when you push the clutch in, you can enable the starter, like a neutral safety switch. But, I don't know if you can see it or not. It goes through the firewall. I had to cut that out. And then over here is where the uh, battery cable goes through. So there you can see where battery cable comes through the firewall and then the wiring harness will run up here the 
This will be all cleaned up. This is where the air cleaner will sit. So we have air cleaner, all the wiring connections, and I forgot to mention the intercooler. So I bought that about 12 years ago off eBay. Um, nice big ass intercooler, works well. Just a lot of piping. One of the things I seen a lot of guys try to find out how to put piping in here for it and the main radiator for the laser is big it's, it runs almost the full width of this space compared to the Daytona's which had the short radiator so what I've done is gone through here I cut this area out and I run both of my intercooler pipes one comes in and then the return comes back over and out so plumbing isn't too bad for the engine because you've got it coming off the turbo in and then returning you're going right back to the throttle body so that makes it nice this does have air conditioning on it and so the condenser sits here and the radiator so all works out well the car has been in storage for two and a half years and I've actually got another 86 laser and an 87 Daytona out there. If you've ever needed to store a car outdoors for extended periods of time, I highly recommend the car capsules. About $800 to $900 and they do a phenomenal job of keeping the dampness out of the cars. I've even opened them up in the winter and had slush get inside, closed them back up and by springtime it's totally dry inside. And there are two fans that run off 110 that just keep blowing air 365 days a year. And uh, they will deflate when you get about four inches of snow on them, but they come right back up and they also keep circulating while they're deflated so the air is still moving. They just aren't nice and, nice and puffy like this. So if you've got neighbors don't want to look at junk cars in your backyards and you don't want them to rust, I highly recommend the investment. This is a close-up of those car capsules. You can see the tech caterpillars on them. Look up at these trees. A month ago, you couldn't even see the trunk of the trees. There were so many leaves on them. And these gypsy moss have just destroyed our woods. They've even eaten the pine trees. To run the car capsules, there's two fans behind air filters, and as long as those fans are blowing and there's no leaks, it stays up. Noise isn't very bad. Um, I wouldn't want it next to my bedroom window, but being a ways from the house, it's no big deal. So that's my recommendation: car capsule. You need to store something outdoors for a long period of time. One of the projects I've done on this car is I wanted to install a hydraulic clutch. To do that, I had to remove the power booster for the master cylinder for the brake. So this is the stock power brake master cylinder that is now a manual cylinder. So we'll be experimenting to find out how well that works. You have to come up with a different size bore. Hydraulic clutch, I've got a Willwood master and it's running through this cable. For the brakes, we're running them through a prop valve that I can adjust for front to rear bias. Hydraulic clutch. 2.2 liter engine, uh, it's bored 40 over, and for the hydraulic clutch what we've done is we've got the Woolwood slave cylinder. The normal position of the clutch arm is horizontal. I've dropped it down a couple notches and that gives me enough length for the slave cylinder. And when that compresses it moves the arm the full amount up to where it would go. So instead of moving from here up, it now moves from here up. 
So I haven't tried it yet, but it looks very promising, and we'll see how that works. The transmission's a 555, and I had Ed Pap go through it, replace the synchros, and re totally redo it for me. He also put in a Quaif limited slip. So hopefully we'll see how that works. This is just the old scrap axle that we cut off when we were putting it. Is it to rotate the input shaft while we we're putting it in so we can slip it on? Uh, turbo's a stock turbo, the 2.2 oil drain hose. All my hoses I've changed the PTFE braided line. So I've gotten away from the rubber braided line. I used to have these on. But I've now replaced them all. My fourth cylinder coolant mod. Um, most people bolt the plate on going through this, the side wall and then run a, a hose over. I've tapped it for one inch MPT and then dropped it down. So this works well. I've tried this for a while before. And then my coolant hose that goes over to the turbo. Oil line, braided line going through a filter into the turbo. Uh, engine itself, like I say, it's 2.2, 40 over, plus 40 injectors, stage 2 turbo setup. Super, I guess it's a Super 60 setup. Uh, one thing I did want to mention on the transmission is years ago, I had a transmission that I powder coated, it had powder coated, um, thought everything was fine on it after rebuilding it myself, and I always had a noise, it was always clanky, when you pushed the clutch in it went quiet, but when you were, the clutch was out and you were just idling in neutral, it would always be clanking around. Turns out that when they powder coat, they heat it, and the heating evidently opened up the bore size of the bearings so the bearings were not fitting tight the races weren't fitting tightly in there so just a word of caution do not powder coat your transmissions I know not to do it for the heads because the valve seats um, get loose so same thing with the heads uh, never powder have your heads or the transmission powder coated I would say don't even powder coat the block uh, I did do that over 10 years ago I had a block that I had powder coated but uh, I'm not powder coating anything on the engine anymore it's just not worth it unless it's the oil pan or the clutch arm I've gone to a serpentine belt setup one of the problems of the old V belt design is trying to add accessories and find room between the engine and the frame Serpentine setup makes that a lot easier. The only drawback is you're looking at about $1,000 or more because you've got to replace the AC compressor, the alternator. I run the newer style alternator, a lot more compact than that, the big monsters that used to be on these. Um, the harmonic balancer is off of VW, I think it's a Jetta. And then I've got a 36 minus 1 trigger wheel on here. I plan to go to mini squirt or mega squirt down the road. The power steering, um, this is a ZF type from the newer engines. Uh, actually, this one came out of a caravan, but I removed the tank off it and added a 90 degree fitting so this will go up to a tank that's on the fender well. The exhaust manifold is Turbos Unleashed. That was their hybrid manifold, I think they called it, from 15 years ago. Fortunately, I got in on that buy. It works really well. Three inch swing valve. Right now it's got the normal O2 sensor on it, but we do want to put a wide band on here. Starters on a quick disconnect. So if you ever have to remove, this, instead of having to remove the wiring harness down at the starter, you can just pop the quick disconnect and off it comes. The, 
if you notice the serpentine setup does away with the water pump so what we're going to do is run a, a Davies Craig electric pump looks like a little mini turbo so that'll be sitting down here it's got the same one and a half inch inlet as the fact the stock engine did The Davies Craig setup. Looking for a model number, there we go. Well, that's my car. I'll try to post uh, every couple weeks or so until we get this running. Hopefully by the beginning of August we'll have it going. Uh, this is Laser Dad, Syracuse, New York. So